So welcome everyone. I'm the only one standing in between, you know, you and happy hour, I think. So let's wrap this up as quickly as we possibly can. But great that you are still joining at this late hour in the day. So yeah, I will talk about one particular aspect of language cloud. So you've seen some more language cloud presentations earlier in the day, also with a view to uh, how developers can plug into it. And I would like in my presentation to focus on the integration between Language Cloud and Studio, which is one of the key aspects of what we want to achieve with uh, this next generation translation management system to basically make sure that we have the best possible integration between a desktop tool that is typically loved by translators and they want to be productive, as productive as possible. And one of the key elements or key considerations for developing an integration like this is that our customers tell us they prefer working more in a hybrid environment which has a strong desktop client but at the same time can consume cloud-based resources and that is really what we are trying to achieve here. So I would first like to set the scene describing this um, aspect and this way of thinking about it. Then I will, uh, in quite some detail, give you the end user perspective of the integration. So how can I get a task from Language Cloud into my studio? How can I work on my task? How can I uh, upload it back to the cloud? Um, and then as part of this integration, to make it as smooth as possible, we changed some of our APIs in studio to be, to just give this bit better user experience to the user rather than having to manually download content from the cloud and somehow manually put it into studio, somehow work on it, give it back. It's much more seamless and much more automated um, where we could automate it. What this also means though is that when we make such API changes, they are not just available in the context of this integration, but can be available for anyone who wants to use these tools to um, create whatever kind of UI they would like to plug into studio. So with that, Let's get started. So first of all, for setting the scene, you have seen this slide before, I think. Louis, you presented this this morning, yeah. It was blue instead of green, so a late afternoon test. What colors did you see for this slide before? Blue and now green. Um, and really what my presentation now focuses on is this. I'm famous for my animations. That uh, doing this. So really, there are so many different kinds of users that plug into the system, that use the system. We've got content owners. Lewis talked about the content owner side, the project manager side. I would like to focus on the translator side because one of our ambitions was, and, and we think that no one has really cracked this yet on the market, is to really think of both the translation management side of things as well as the translation productivity side of things. So not only be concerned with you know, giving the best possible experience to a work giver who puts content into the system and wants uh, this translated, but also think of the work doer side where a translator or reviewer also wants to have the best possible experience to work on a task that might be assigned to them. So I'm kind of ignoring most of the other aspects of Language Cloud, but really want to show you how we achieved the integration, what guided us in terms of making this more user-friendly than maybe previous generations of, of integrations, and also what APIs empower this um, behind the scenes. So when we talk about the translator persona using Language Cloud to do translation work, right from the very start of the Language Cloud release that we have done, when you use Trados tools, you can also use third-party tools for this, but when you use uh, the, the SDL tools to do the translation or review work, then you've got two choices uh, out of the box. So you can either stay in your browser, stay online and open a task in the online editing environment, which gives you already uh, some productivity from a translation review perspective. So you basically can say, maybe it's a small assignment, Maybe it's just a few words that I need to uh, translate. Maybe I have a very short deadline that I have to hit. Then why would I go through the extra steps of downloading something to Studio and work on it there, but rather than in that case, the online flow uh, might be more attractive. What I focus on today, though, is the 
second integration, which is uh, using obviously SDL Trotter Studio as the desktop tool. And for those that might not be familiar with what Studio actually is, because you know it's the developer day, so you might not um, have the full details there. In a nutshell, it's really a complete translation and also review environment for language professionals. So this is really for professional translators. It's not for subject matter experts that might do in-country review for translations, but rather it's really for a translator who wants to have all kinds of sophisticated tools to be more productive in their work. So that's really what it is. And as such, it is optimized for doing both translation and review work. And of course, now what's new in this is that we now obviously support also language cloud projects. We already support lots of other flows. So we have Multitrans uh, integration. We've got an integration, obviously, with SDL TMS. We've got an integration with SDL World Server. But this is now the new integration where we made also a few changes to make it a bit more seamless. From a user base perspective, um, it's really great to be able to say that uh, SDL Trotter Studio is really the market leader by far in this space. So it's trusted by, this is a marketing slide, so it says 250,000 <laughs> translation professionals. If you really stretch it and you know, look at all the different generations of Studio out there, so we started with Studio in 2009. We had six major releases since then. If you really stretch it, you might come to a number close to this. But realistically speaking, tens of thousands of translators use this every day, and this is really great. And one of the key pillars of success, which we really strategically decided on early on in the game, was to not just give users a tool to work with, but give them really a platform where you can plug in and develop your own extensions, your own customizations that extend the reach of what Studio can do out of the box. So that's why from day one we said we need to have an extensible desktop platform with a rich set of APIs that people can use in enterprise flows and translation management flows to also optimize the work that the translator or reviewer might do. So that was a key differentiator that we have in Studio that we are strongly using in this integration as well. So I mentioned six major releases of Studio since 2009. When we started with Studio 2009, 10 years ago, it already was a kind of an extensible platform, but we mostly hadn't published anything to third parties yet. So basically, we were using internally some of our APIs to do uh, the, the initial releases. But then ever since the, I think it was the service release 3 in 2010, we started publishing APIs slowly but surely that users could start using in their own flows. And um, we had, I think at that point, the core API, and we had the translation memory API at that point. So we had a few initial APIs that allowed users to do certain extensions to Studio. We then continued on this path uh, quite extensively to make sure that we open up more and more possibilities for customizing this. And I think the what I would call the breakthrough API that really made the difference was this one, integration API. Because this is basically an API that, for the first time, allowed users or developers to add their own user interface to Studio. So basically, you get Studio out of the box. But then you could say, well, actually, I need a specific view in Studio where I can plug my own data in and I can show my own data that I need for a particular flow of, of, of work. And so far, this wasn't possible. but. With the Studio 2014 release, which was the third major release, we had Studio 2009, 2011, and then 2014. And with that release, users could start plugging in their own user interface. And even today, when we have the language cloud integration that I will speak about, it very heavily uses the integration API to do exactly that, so to provide specific seamless integration points that then um, also add and decorate the user interface. There are lots of links that are um, shown here. So we've got quite extensive API documentation. Um, and we've got really many examples by now of people using these APIs. So we've got our own App Store on the one hand. So we've got an App Store where people can publish the tools and plugins that they have built using the APIs. And we've got around 300 apps by now. Um, I still remember in 2010 or 11 when we started publishing these APIs, the back then the CEO said, 
by the end of this year, I want 100 apps to be on the App Store plugin. So kind of set a, set a goal back then. And I was thinking, yeah, dream on. <laughs> because basically at that point in time, this wasn't happening because indeed these APIs were lacking that people would really, that it would really get the traction that you get so many ap uh, apps uh, being created. But now I am, I'm actually now really surprised how creative the development community has been by now where I was thinking, mm, yeah, maybe we've got 30, 40 use cases where you know, someone might want to do an app. But having 300 now and the ideas that people have is, is really great. So one recent example that we have, uh, that we also showed in another track today, um, it's a subtitling app. So basically it allows you to translate subtitles within Studio. Out of the box, Studio can only handle one particular file type. It doesn't visualize anything for you if you've got subtitles. So you really you have you have something, but it's very basic. The subtitling app uh, that we uh, created is has a, a really extensive set of features and functionality. It shows you the time codes. It shows you it supports different file types. It shows you the video as you translate the subtitles, so you can see visually in real time how the subtitle will look in the video at that particular point in in, in the video. So it's really very very extensive set, and it's all done using the integration API and the file type API. So I could spend the entire 45 minutes on this slide alone because it's, it's really rich. But it's all happening as part of uh, you know, what, what our strategy is that we open this uh, platform up for third parties. We have published sample code for inspiration. We've uh, s published several samples actually as open source so people can take this and enhance it uh, to, to, to their liking. And we have a toolkit also that makes it easier to start developing against these APIs. So quite some information, mostly on GitHub, actually. So no, now let's talk concretely about the integration between Studio and Language Cloud. So what are some aspects of the integration? I actually said this already on the first slide, but once again to just repeat what I said there. So Language Cloud as part of the integration, of course, is used for all aspects when it comes to pre-processing a project, when it comes to putting content in, preparing it so that vendors can start work on it. So really the focus of Language Cloud is translation management and Studio is then obviously used for doing the actual work in terms of doing translation work. And of course, its focus is more on translation productivity. So Language Cloud and Studio together really bring <coughs> these two aspects together because we want to make sure that we really have the best solution for these two big pieces that make up uh, the translation supply chain at the end of the day. Um, so that's really what this slide says. And concretely, how does it work? What are the touch points uh, that I can use in order to have the content flow from Language Cloud to Studio and back. So the concept uh, is realized via what we call the task inbox. So when I'm in Language Cloud in my browser, I can see a very clear user interface that shows me my current task that I should work on. So that's my task inbox that's in the browser. And then from there, I can basically claim a task that I want to work on. So I basically accept it as a vendor. And then as a vendor, I can say, now I can click on open this in Studio so that you can basically get the content out of Language Cloud into Studio and back again. And really what this is at the end of the day is a task-based integration for both translation and review tasks and yeah, offers quite some rich uh, user experience around it. So rather than live demo uh, in deep jet lag at 1, it's 1 a.m. for me actually at the moment. So I'm kind of struggling. So I have a series of screenshots to play it safe. Uh, but how does it work? So here in this case, um, I'm in my language cloud user interface in the browser. So I can maybe show this a little bit larger. So I've, I've, I'm in my browser. This is actually a browser. You can see it up here. It's Chrome in this particular case. And I'm now in my task inbox. You can see this um, highlighted in the top line there. And I've got a concrete task to work on. In this case, it's a Word document, so a docx file. And now I've got several choices to uh, basically get this content from Language Cloud to Studio. As I mentioned, one flow, very obvious, is 
just stay online, stay in the browser, do the work there. And the second one, and this is the one we will look at, is basically to open the work in studio and then start the work there. So if we come back to this, I've already clicked on the open in studio button and studio is now launching from within the browser. And then what we are doing then to give a smooth experience rather than for the user to need to know okay in order to uh, work in studio i need to download something into my local hard disk then i need to know where i actually placed it then i need to find it in studio and open it manually rather than all of that what we have done as part of this integration and we've enhanced some apis behind the scenes is we use our notifications area to show the user what's currently happening so obviously I'm downloading some content from the cloud, which will take a few seconds or you know, maybe a bit longer if the task is a bit larger. So that's why we are taking the user by the hand and basically saying, we are preparing the task for you and we are putting some specific information into this uh, notifications area. That's the end user perspective. Behind the scenes, and I will talk about that in, in more detail later, there's a notification API that we make use of and that we've extended for the purposes of this uh, particular integration. So we're taking the user by the hand. Then obviously at some point the task is ready for me to work on. So then what happens is I'm getting very concretely a notification that the task is ready for me to work on. There's one very obvious button that I can click on to start my work. So really what we want to do is give, give, uh, give a smooth experience. And then obviously for those that might know Studio, this is how Studio looks like in the translation day to day. Um, the key aspect here being that a language cloud project is very similar to any other type of project that the user might work on. It's always the same familiar environment. However, what is the big change in this? But again, it's behind the scenes, so the user doesn't really need to know about it. I'm now accessing cloud-based resources as I'm working on this. So I might share a particular cloud-based translation memory with another user uh, or other users in, in the same supply chain. I might use the same term base. It's all happening in real time. So if, when I'm translating something that another user or another translator might also need to translate at some point, when I have translated it, another user can right away benefit from my translation because it's stored centrally in the cloud in real time. And what we have put into this as well is neural machine translation. So we have now, we are in the process of replacing statistical machine translation with uh, the neural kind, obviously because the quality is so much better, especially for languages that have been so far quite difficult with this. So we're all combining these different cloud-based resources behind the scenes. All I'm accessing from a user perspective is an engine that hides all these details behind the scenes. But again, what have we used for this? We've used the translation provider API in Studio to make this happen. So that's a well-established API. It was one of the first ones that we had. And we keep re reusing this for uh, various integrations in this case as well. So I'm now doing the work. Here's uh, how I would uh, also see the neural machine translation aspect. And then when I'm done, once again, rather than then saying I'm done and now I go out of studio and somehow upload something to the cloud, um, rather I can stay within studio and I can use the complete task functionality, which is up here. So I don't need to know any of the details, but rather I can just say I'm now done with my task. I want to uh, upload it back again. And then once again, we have the opposite kind of step in the process where we are then showing the user, OK, you're done, great. Your task is being uploaded back to Language Cloud. And the really nice then final step is that I can say as a user, I want to basically check, has everything uploaded correctly? I, I want to look at it again. I can then uh, click on this hyperlink here, open in Language Cloud, which then brings me back to my browser where we started. And then I can see here that the task that I had, have done is now completed and is showing up in the Language Cloud web interface. So you can also see this here. Up here, I've got my completed set of tasks. So it has now moved from an active task to a completed task that then can 
um, go back to the to the uh, work giver maybe or to the project manager or maybe there's a uh, review step as, as a next step but I'm done in terms of my work so what happens behind the scenes how have we fine-tuned our API's to enable this integration and what can you expect from these API's first of all this kind of deep integration with the seamless way of working requires the latest Studio 2019 release. I've talked about Studio in a different audience today, earlier today. So we released the SR2 release in August this year, so it's like two months ago. We are currently creating a cumulative update that will have further refinements to this. Uh, but really concretely what we have updated as part of this integration is the Studio Integration API and most particularly the notification API that populates that particular notification area that we've seen. But we've also extended slightly other really key APIs in Studio. One is the Project Automation API that behind the scenes downloads project content from Language Cloud, puts it back again, and also the Package API. So in other integrations, I really very tangibly touch a package, but in this integration, I no longer really know that there's a package that's being uh, passed back and forth behind the scenes. Uh, but still, be at the end of the day, what is actually working in this case is the, the package API. So what are the specifics in terms of the notification API? We've improved the notification system by providing a lot more touch points than we previously had, which once again provides for this smooth flow where I'm seeing you know, your task is being prepared for you. You can now start the work when I complete the task, when it shows me it's being uploaded again, now you can open it back again in Language Cloud. So all the steps we just went through, all of these um, extension points and uh, API methods have been enhanced for this particular integration. So once again, it just takes the user by the hand by doing more stuff behind the scenes rather than uh, being so explicit about the different uh, aspects of this integration. So this is as nerdy as it gets today. I'm not a coder myself, I'm not a developer, but I have some ideas of what these APIs do. In product management, it's kind of key to be able to articulate these things, even though you might not be a developer, like Lewis has also done earlier today with the Language Cloud APIs, so it's similar here. But basically what I'm showing here is the iStudio notification interface, which has lots of different methods and elements to it that help me with this and you can see that there's kind of uh, different UI controls that I can put in um, I can put in hyperlinks we've seen lots of these uh, different uh, aspects of uh, as part of the demo flow earlier but you can see behind the scenes it's maybe 15 different methods and um, interfaces that I can use as part of this together with formatting for a title. Can the user actually close this or do we force the user to see the progress and not be able to close this while the progress is uh, happening? All kinds of things are happening here behind the scenes. And I've also put a code snippet that can show you a bit if you were writing C sharp code, then this is how it would look like. So you basically set a few Boolean values to false or true depending on what you need. So do I, am I showing a hyperlink or am I not, do I not want to show a hyperlink? Do I want to show a button that the user can click on it? Can the user close this so allows user to dismiss equals true? These kinds of uh, code lines that we can see. And then at the end of the day, um, I all publish this via the iStudio event aggregator that is used behind the scenes, uh, which is also part in this uh, source code. So this was the specifics around the notification API. We also, as I mentioned, have improved other aspects. So in this particular case, I'm seeing an, an animated demo even. So basically what I'm seeing in this lower half of the screen here, um, let's see if I can go there. So basically this UI that I can see here within Studio is not something we provide out of the box, but is, this is rather a sample um, application that someone has uh, written that now is used behind the scenes to demonstrate these functionalities. So basically it's now possible to uh, open the project wizard that we have in Studio from within the API and also do, do work with packages. 
So that's what I'm saying here. The new project wizard can be opened programmatically, and this is actually happening. So in this animated GIF, I think we are clicking on the open project wizard button. And when I'm doing that, then the project wizard opens and shows me its UI. Um, it's then possible to specify specific data for the project wizard data object. What's also important, and this was also needed by Language Cloud, is custom logic can now be injected into the package wizard flows. So far, the, the package wizard was not extensible. It just was hardwired uh, in the way it was. But now with uh, these extensions, I can now put my own code into the package wizard flow if I needed to, because all the integrations are slightly different. And then I can also programmatically refresh the project's view. So here are some code snippets for these um, things. So I'm opening the project wizard, and I've got a demo for this, which I can briefly fire up. I think it's very similar to the demo we just saw anyway, so it's the same kind of thing. No, only in this case, I'm opening the package wizard rather than the project wizard. And then I can inject my own custom logic into this flow if I wanted to. And then I've also got, uh, so that is the project package wizard, which is basically the um, the uh, first flow when I'm opening a project, I'm going through a wizard to you know maybe specify a location where I would want to put the project, and then when I'm so that's for starting the work and opening up the the work, and then when I want to return the work, I'm using the opposite wizard basically, which is the return package wizard, which then uh, can do the opposite and basically return my work. And you know, this is all user interface that has been long in studio, but it has not been possible from the outside to trigger this. And now I can trigger this as part of this integration as well. Um, also, what we've done as part of updating the APIs, we wanted to start standardizing the look and feel of third party applications. So, so far, I would say integrations with Studio can be pretty wild west. So anyone can create their own style and look and feel of buttons and controls that they would like to use. And we thought it might be a good point in time where we try and start making this a bit more consistent. So that's why we have now one look and feel for buttons, checkboxes, all these kinds of classic user interface elements. Here's an example of a, of a um, data grid uh, that we have where I can just put feature value pairs in this particular case. I can also see the title style is in this kind of Microsoft-y blue color that Microsoft tends to use as well. So we try to get inspired by uh, their way of creating UX as well to some extent. But you can see that all these typical UI elements are now more consistent as part of our um, integration API update that we did for this release. Um, and that's also what this slide basically says. So we have a more consistent and enhanced look and feel for plugins and their UI controls. And you can basically use them as part of uh, referencing these DLLs, which are all part of the integration API, which then allow you to be more consistent in the, the buttons and controls that you might want to use. The requirement here is that the plugin needs to be written in Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF. So Studio is actually a mixture of WinForms and WPF. But we tend to try and create any new functionality in Studio using WPF rather than WinForms at this stage. Because WinForms was there first, and Windows Presentation Foundation is more modern. It also has some years already uh, on, the, on the market as well. But that's kind of the technology we, we use for. It's a classic technology for desktop clients. 